Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Lately, I've been in love with embossing folders and today we're bringing ink and embossing folders together to create some really fun card making techniques. Let's get into it. I'm starting off with this gorgeous floral 3D folder from Spellbinders and I love their folders because it's five and a half by eight and a half inches so we can make this into a slimline card. So when we open up the folder, there's going to be one side with the design that is raised and one side with the design that's impressed. And you want to use the side with the design that's impressed pressed so we can add ink to the outside. I'm going to use some warm colors starting off with Shooting Star and we'll just go in here and swipe our ink pad on the surface. Then I'll bring in a little bit of Guppy, moving down a little bit. All right, then I'll move into some From Queen and I'll finish it off with some Bee Sting. And honestly, these ink pads apply really smoothly onto the surface and give lots of color. Once that ink is applied, we can go in and mist this down and I'm gonna spray lots of water to get that color moving and blending on the surface. I'll take the dry side of the folder and line it up with the part of the design that I want to see. And I'm using stark white cardstock that I cut down to slimline size. And then I'm going to tip the embossing folder and press this down. And once it hits, you don't want it to move whatsoever. Now I'm bringing in my platinum six and I'm gonna use the new plates. So remove the platform top. I'm going to place my embossing folder down and then I'm gonna place the D adapter plate in here and run it right through. And check out how beautiful that is. It gives such a stunning watercolor effect like this when it sinks into the cardstock and the colors blended together beautifully. I'm just going in with a paper towel to clean off my inks and they won't stain because they're water-based. All right, now once this is dry, if I want to, I can go in and add a little bit more color to the raised surfaces. So I'm going in with a brayer. I love this little mini distress brayer since it's a little bit squishier than other brayers. And I'm just going to go in and roll it on the same color ink pad that I used down here. And I'm just going to roll it over the top of the surface. And this is going to hit the raised areas and give me beautiful color on the raised surface. I'll wipe off my brayer in between layers and then I can move into the next color, which is a little bit of Prom Queen. I'll again roll my brayer right in here and I'm just going for a tone on tone effect. So wherever there's Prom Queen that I added down, I'm going to go in with my brayer and add a little bit of Prom Queen to the raised surfaces like that. Then I'll move into a little bit of Guppy up here and add that right down. I love that orange color. And then last but not least, we'll go in with a little bit of Shooting Star. And the thing that I really like about using a brayer like this, instead of just a blending tool, is it just hits the top areas. So instead of really seeping in, it still leaves a lot of white to the design and really just hits the most dimensional surfaces. I love the dimension that that little bit of color on the raised surfaces adds. I'm gonna do one final step to finish off this background and that's just go in on the edge and blend a little bit of the same color in. If you guys have watched my channel before, you know that I do this technique a lot. By going in and darkening the edges with just the same color that we used, it's going to give it a little bit of depth and dimension and really draw your eye to the center since we've darkened the edges and the center's lighter. I've cut stark white cardstock down to seven by eight and a half inches, and I'm going to bring it on my scoring board and score it right at three and a half. I'll flip it and then score it again down at three and a half here. Then we can crease that and fold it in half and give it a nice score. And that creates the slimline card base. For a sentiment, I'm gonna use this scripted love dye from Gina K. For the word, I love alcohol ink black cardstock. It's meant for alcohol inks, but it's this super great dark black cardstock. And it's got this kind of matte soft touch texture to it. So I'll run that right through my die cutting machine. And I'll run the shadow through with the white cardstock. I've cut the shadow out twice to layer it up for some dimension and I'll add it down. And then to kind of line things up, I just kind of pinch the edges lightly together to get everything perfectly aligned. And with liquid adhesive, you've got just a couple seconds to kind of move it around before it dries. I have picked out the You So Very Much sentiment from the coordinating stamp set and I'm just going to use my anti-static powder tool and ink it up with a little bit of Versamark ink to stamp it down onto my black cardstock. And then I'll throw over a layer of white embossing powder and blow off the excess. Then I'll heat set it until it's bright white. I've adhered everything down and there we have our finished card. I love this watercolor background with the embossing and then going over the raised areas with the darker color and finishing it off with a simple word dye. The colors are just stunning. 
For this next technique, I'm using the Altenew 3D Rose Bouquet, and instead of using the kind of debossed area, I'm going to use the raised design for this next card. All right, and to add down my color, I'm gonna go in with the domed foam blending tools, and these have a small enough surface area that I can go in on my design and follow the area of the flowers. So I'm just going in and kind of avoiding some of the areas and adding color down to one of the roses. Then you can go in with a darker shade and take the ink pad directly to the surface and just hit some of the raised areas of the embossing folder. That's gonna add tons of dimension. And the great part is if you like went to other areas that you don't want color, just go in and wipe it off. For the next flower, I'm adding a little bit of guppy and it's fairly easy to stay in these areas since the design is raised up. If you go in with a light pressure, you find you won't hit many of the other areas that you're not trying to. And here I'll go in with a little bit of traffic cone, which is a darker orange, and just swipe it over the surface to hit some of those raised areas. For the last flower, I'm using a little bit of purple, which is triple berry, and again, follow the area of the flower. And then I'll go in with this gorgeous purple called crown me, which is a little bit darker, and add some of the shading. And I went into some of the areas of the leaves. And again, it's really easy to just go in and clean up any areas that you weren't trying to hit. Lastly, for the leaves, I'm going in with a little bit of psych and I'm just going to go around the flowers. And if you need to, you can even go in with like the edge of the blending tool to get into some of those tighter areas. And then I'll hit some of those raised surfaces with a little bit of later gator to add some depth to the leaves. Again, I'm going to mist this down a little bit and then I'm going to Flip it to the clean side. I'll place my stark white cardstock down and then flip over the design right onto the surface, making sure it doesn't move. For this folder, you need the platform base, the top, and one cutting plate. Then we'll run it right through the machine. And oh my gosh, that is just gorgeous when it comes out. I adore the shading that we were able to add to these flowers and the beautiful watercolor look that it has. And it's a debossed effect, so everything is inlaid instead of being raised up. And if you wanna take this one step further, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Slippery When Wet Lunar Paste, and I'm just going to use the tiniest amount, literally from the lid on my finger here. And I just want to kind of run this over top of the surface. And again, just using the slightest amount, I don't want it to overpower anything, but I just wanted to add some shine to these florals and check it out. When it tilts in that light, you can see some beautiful shine. I'm gonna add it to all the flowers. And check that out, a little bit of lunar paste goes a long way to add some beautiful gold shine to some of the raised areas. I think You Are In My Prayers works perfectly for this from the Pretty Peony stamp set. And again, I'm gonna use some of my black cardstock to do a little bit of heat embossing so that the sentiment really stands out nicely. I'll throw over some white embossing powder. And then I'm going to fussy cut the sentiment out. I like that it gets a little bit closer and it also gives kind of a more finished look. To do this, I'm using my Fisker's Spring Assist Scissors. I like that they spring back out at you so your hands won't get tired, and they're really great at getting into some littler details too. I think this area right here is great. It's kind of centered, and it's not covering up too much. So I'll pop it up on some foam tape right there. And there is that finished card. I love this kind of watercolor look as it's impressed into the cardstock like that. And then finishing off with a little bit of lunar paste adds some shine and really brings the card to life. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Leave me a comment down below on which card was your favorite. And also down there is a full supplies list for everything that I used. And those links help support me, so I appreciate if you guys use them. Thanks for spending time with me today, and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day. Bye.